Uh, hello everyone, no respawns here. So in this video I'm going to show you quickly how to not only fight off effectively a good defense, um, but also defend yourself from wild animals and set up some quite funky little bunkers. So you see right here, I've got, um, my people are basically all just monging around the colony just doing their thing all around everywhere and we've also just had a rather large raid now we don't actually have our defenses set up i will have them set up at the end of the video which is i'm quite pleased with my bunker builds but for now we need to basically make the most of a bad situation as you can see most of these guys fortunately are um, armed with quite primitive weapons generally speaking in the early stages of the game when you do get larger groups of people like this the game would be so cool as to give them all, you know, assault rifles and sniper rifles, though you will still get assault rifle and sniper rifle attacking you, but generally speaking, they'll be in a smaller group. So what I've gone and done is I've selected everyone, drafted everyone, and I'm going to use what cover we have. Now, fortunately, again, these guys are using quite primitive weapons, so we're just going to quickly just emergency pull everyone to anywhere, basically. Use cover. That's just the most important thing. Get yourself in a position, but also make sure that you've got your people with the long range weapons spread out a little bit. So they're acts because you can, a lot of, when I first started this, a lot of my early wounds were from self-inflicted gunshots. You, that's why I'm moving Chellis right there because she was going to shoot us. Pretty solid right now. Fortunately, it seems to be that the group has split up a little bit. I try and focus fire a little bit on the closest targets. The reason being is if you... Then I quickly switch over and panic and shoot this guy. <laughs> the reason being is that you only have to wipe over, wipe out half of the raiders for them to fuck off. So you don't actually have to wipe out the entire group. I also like to, when you've got a little bit more of a setup going, you can actually focus fire on the people who have got gear that you want. I often check to see if they're carrying any medicine. Um, at this stage, for example, not everyone has a gun. I think two of them... Nope, I don't think Paulette... Oh no, I've left Paulette inside because she doesn't have anything. But a couple of them have bows. So I believe... Yeah, no, they've already ran off now. I killed four of them. It's all safe and dandy. The good thing is, is as you can see, those guys are fucking off now. I've got... I could loot these guys. If I remember correctly, they didn't have anything particularly of note. But then I've just said it, so they're going to bury them all. And that's pretty much it on defense. I'm quite lax in the first year. So you can see right now it's the 12th of fall. So I've still got winter coming. It's actually, it's not even... Or is it's fall? No, yeah, yeah, I've still got winter to come yet. So I have only just started thinking about defense. But as you can see, my colony's very well set up right now. Um, and we're going to skip ahead in a sec so you can see. So, right here what we've got is I've had a wild animal attack my colony. You get a notification in the corner. This is actually the most pathetic animal attack ever. I think it's a single hair, if I remember correctly. But then a little bit after this I did actually have a group of wild boars. But, oh no, it's just one boar, that's it. So he's going a bit insane. So what I've gone and done is I've set all of my settlers, our colonists rather, to area one. As you can see, I've highlighted area because animals can't open doors, obviously. So if I set everyone to area one, they will never leave the compound. And you might also, I've deliberately done it so area one is, you just select this and then you select area one and then you just highlight it like that and all that jazz. And you can select it for animals as well. Um, I've made sure that the doors aren't included because you don't want them accidentally walking open, opening the doors and letting something in. And that's just pretty much it. The animal will actually wear itself out eventually. So then you're good to go, basically. You just let it wear itself out, it'll fall asleep. And that's the same with the man-eater packs as well. Right, now this is my pride and joy. Now this isn't ostensibly my idea. The idea of bunkers has been going for quite a while, but my design for it. I'm going to put a link in the description to the RimWorld wiki, which is really helpful for actually where I got this idea, but then my actual design for it, I, I figured out myself. So I put them very close. I have quite a lot of exits um, to my colony. Now, a lot of people obviously don't like that, but I do. The reason being is I can have bunkers, these little bunkers here, and they're made out of granite, by the way. So it's quite a nice looking design. I mentioned this before, and those of you who haven't watched my other RimWorld videos, my focus is efficiency as high as possible, but also I make sure I prioritize things looking cool, and I love the way these look. Now, the reason being, I've made them out of granite, so the it's very, very tough surface area. So basically, they're not going to be bullets, generally speaking, won't be destroying anything, which is great. So that means you, all, you have very solid cover. Uh, you've put those little gaps in between the walls so because when your settlers are next to all of that they will actually lean out and shoot between 
the columns, so it gives them quite a nice little firing. It basically makes them harder to hit. And also, I've put sandbags in front because sandbags is sandbags are waist high defense. So effectively, they've got defended on the waist high, and then they're just peeking. So it basically makes my guys incredibly hard to hit. And also, I'm expanding the roof area as well. The reason for that is that one, obviously, with the different weather patterns, it can be raining, it can be snowing, it can be toxic fallout and you obviously don't want people getting particularly depressed that's another reason why i keep it quite close to my entrances right now but also that means it's very very dark which your enemies take an accuracy penalty now i'd like to point out this is not the most perfectly efficient setup everywhere i am um, just ignore this it's just me <laughs> getting things while i wait for the build but basically this is not the most perfectly efficient setup ever if you check the wiki and the link i'll show you there are some really efficient you know, kill rooms, things like that. To be completely honest, um, oh yeah, I've got a bunny attacking as well. Um, to be completely honest, again, I prioritize aesthetics over necessarily being the most efficient ever. But this is efficient as possible while still looking realistic and also pretty badass. Um, I unfortunately don't actually have any attacks to demonstrate this, but I'll try and ha just throw one in at some point. I was waiting for a raider, but I, <laughs> I was like, I'm, I'm not going to get any raids now, am I, until the next season or something stupid like that. Anyway, I hope you guys found that useful. As always, follow me on Twitter, at no respawns. We'll see me up too. I've been giving people updates on how my colonists are doing. Recently, they all caught the flu. It was rather depressing. Um, uh, I'll have another Fallout video up tomorrow, and you guys enjoy your weekend. Take care.